Thank you for that, Mr. Chairman. I do want to thank our witnesses for being here this morning. The Foreign Agents Registration Act, or, or FARA, for folks watching at home, as has mentioned, is a decades-old law that has been pushed to the forefront of politics in the courts in recent years. The point of FARA is simple. If you engage in certain activities on behalf of a foreign principal, you are supposed to register with the Department of Justice. The purpose of this law is very simple. We need to inform the American public when people working for foreign companies or governments intend to influence our government, the U.S. government officials or the American people. It's a very important statute that ensures transparency in our system, and as such, violations of FARA carry stiff penalties, up to $250,000 fine for each violation and up to five years in prison. For decades, FARA was only known to D.C. insiders, really. The Department of Justice focused on promoting voluntary compliance with the law rather than prosecuting violations. One Washington, D.C. lawyer who represents clients in FARA matters remarked that before 2016, FARA was, quote, a backwater of American law, and a very still backwater at that, with just seven prosecutions between the years 1966 and 2016, just seven cases. But that all changed after 2016, and a lot of people scratch their heads and wonder why. Well, desperate to find any law that President Trump and his aides could have broken during the 2016 election, special counsel Robert Mueller and his team turned to FARA. They dusted it off, and he and politically biased FBI officials sought to push FARA to its limits. Why? To advance their partisan investigations and take down anybody related to President Trump. The FBI used failing to register under FARA during investigations to pressure George Papadopoulos, Michael Flynn, Paul Manafort, and Carter Page. On April 28, 2020, the FBI and the DOJ even used a failure to register under FARA to justify a raid on Giul Rudy Giuliani's apartment and his law offices in New York City. Of course, now that President Trump has left office, the FBI again has little interest in enforcing FARA. If that's not evidence of political bias in the depths of government, I don't know what is especially since there is ample evidence now that during the Obama administration, listen to this, hey, everybody turn on the news, Hunter Biden attempted to influence his father, then Vice President Joe Biden, by promoting the interests of foreign companies, full stop. This evidence can be found in Hunter Biden's laptop, which we now know the FBI has had in its possession since December 2019, nearly two and a half years, but has seemingly done nothing with it at all. My colleague, Congressman Matt Gates, also introduced the laptop into the congressional record of the House Judiciary Committee, this committee, just last week. And I certainly hope the majority staff doesn't delay the sharing of its contents with the, contents with the American people. Everybody has a right to know that the son of the vice president used his political influence to benefit, among many other companies, CEFC, China Energy Company, a Chinese conglomerate whose chairman had links to the Chinese Communist Party. And it wasn't as if Hunter had no idea who was potentially breaking the law over his dealings with the Chinese corporation. Listen to this. On May 1st, 2017, he texted his friend and business associate, Tony Bobolinsky, writing, quote, we don't want to have to register as foreign agents, unquote. He goes on to suggest that they set up a shell corporation to presumably shield their involvement and allow the Chinese company to do business with the U.S. government without raising flags. Mr. Bobolinsky has since publicly stated that then Vice President Joe Biden knew exactly what Hunter's business dealings with China were as he discussed them with him directly. An email from Hunter's laptop dated May 13, 2017, even contains a discussion of, quote, remuneration packages for a deal with CEFC China Energy Company, including equity splits of, quote, 20 for H and, quote, 10 held for H by, for the big guy. According to Bob Linsky, the big guy is a nickname Hunter commonly used to refer to his father. The laptop also has evidence of possible far violations from Hunter Biden's involvements in Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and Sri Lanka, just to name a few. In summation, Hunter Biden appears to have arranged meetings with U.S. officials and engaged in other representational activities on behalf of his foreign business connections. Based on my reading of FARA and anybody else who looks this up, failing to register such behavior is clearly, clearly, a violation of the law. However, the DOJ and FBI have so far failed to utilize the same hardball tactics they used against President Trump's aides to get answers from the current president's son. To date, zero charges have been filed, and FARA has not been used as a pretext to conduct any pre-dawn raid of Hunter Biden's residence 
as was done to Mr. Giuliani. Once again, the political bias of our country's top law enforcement bodies is rearing its head. The double standard continues to erode the American people's faith in our institutions, and this is a dangerous, dangerous road to be on. Mr. Chairman, I look forward to further discussing this issue with our witnesses today, and I yield back.